So at the University of Liverpool, we operate what's called a district heat network. That means that we generate up to 90% of our campus's electricity needs here on site, and that's in the energy centre behind me. And we do that through CHP, also known as combined heat and power. This means that although our carbon footprint remains at about 40,000 tonnes per annum at the moment, that has plateaued. We already know that Clark help us operate our CHP in the most efficient way now, but now they're keeping us really on track with technological developments such as how the CHP can be adapted to take different fuel blends. Combined heat and power alongside renewable technology such as wind or solar and energy storage can offer a truly hybridised energy solution Whilst a natural gas fire system might be in place today, those assets are future-proofed in so much as they can utilise renewable fuels as and when they become more economically viable. Last year, the university set a 2035 target for its scope one and two emissions. So we're looking at our short-term, medium-term and long-term actions. And a really big part of that for us is going to be decarbonising heat. Reaching net zero is absolutely paramount to stabilising climate change. We need to see some better regulation around the grid and the price differentiation between electricity and between gas so that we can create robust business cases for transitioning heat networks like ours. We need real practical delivery and support so that industry, universities, the sector, heat networks, new and existing, can do their bit to decarbonise and, and move us through that, that national decarbonisation journey.